It's so easy Every day Living in Lubbock The one and only LBK Cause we got rock and roll We got the blues We can honky tonk and knock cowboy things And through the dust in the rearview mirror you can see our river land roots and through the dust in the rearview mirror you can see our river land roots good afternoon welcome to another episode of lbk rhythm and roots lubbock's podcast for musicians by musicians I'm your host, Jason Robertson. It's my co-host, Rhonda Taylor. Hi, Rhonda. How you doing? Good. Good. We've got somebody pretty special with us today, don't we? We do. And we're at a special place today. Yep, we're in a legendary place called the Texas Cafe, or you might also call it the Spoon, if you're from back in the day. That's right. This this is a pretty historic little painting behind us, isn't it? Yeah, it's a great background. Man, we have got a local legend. I mean, this guy here is one of the most accomplished guitar players I've ever seen. I love his music. Got Mr. John Sprott with Hi, us. Hi, John. Today. John, good thank to be you. Here. Thank so you for taking the here. time to come today and do this yeah. with us, man. I bet you couldn't even count how many times you played on this stage right here. I couldn't. You're that's, correct. That's hundreds, You're maybe correct. thousands. I mean, yeah. Going back to what year? Um, the eighties, the um, mid nineteen eighties, something like that. Yeah, this is the stage I believe, if I'm right about it, that I met you at when I came to a to a Sunday night jam here, which is one of the reasons that it's legendary. And I was blown away because uh, you played a song that was one of my favorites, which I'm hoping that you might play for me today at some point. Jolene by Ray LaMontagne. And I oh, was yeah. like, great. Oh. Man. What a great song. Was, and you just guy. did it so well that I was just like, wow, I'm going to keep coming to this He's jam. An awesome singer. Yeah, too. we do my that song in our yeah, we do it too. And, and, I, I'm interested to see your version. Yeah, I'd love for yeah. you to do that at some point today. All right. Yeah, it's so great to have you here. We're uh, also. Uh, kind of live today uh we have an audience here at the spoon i call it the spoon still um probably everybody in here has seen you here before which is wonderful that we have this audience today well and you know the great thing about the spoon live music five nights a week uh the jam sunday night yeah um Bike night, Wednesday night, Mm -hmm. acoustic night, Thursday night. Note about the uh, uh uh sunday jam it kind of has a direct lineage from the original uh, Sunday Night Jam that Jesse Taylor started over uh, at the original Stubbs over there on East Broadway. How did this, how did it come about? Because that closed down or something and moved over here? It it originally, of course, was was over there and and, uh, then uh, Stubbs moved down to Austin and and, uh, they opened this uh, uh, location where uh, um, Cast Iron Cast Grill Iron. is now. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, um, several uh, several of us in the in the music community ran jams up there, and of course Stubbs came out and opened that first one. I mean, he 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 was he was closely associated with with uh, that that establishment. Yeah. And literally came out on stage. And opened that first jam. Well, eventually it got to where uh, myself and a couple other guys were running that jam there, and uh, that place went out of business, and we moved it here. And whenever it moved here, I was still running it. And I eventually uh, retired from doing that. But there's a there's a there's a through line, just directly. You know, kind of, kind of via old Stubbs himself yeah. from the original the one. That, I know I would have loved a bit of that one. From the know, original you know. one that got started back in the early 1970s uh, by uh, Jesse Taylor. So we're we are really getting to some roots here with with this guest here. Yeah, we are. So, so what? What uh, do you remember the first time that you played? And you're not from Lubbock originally, are you? I was born in Fort Worth, but uh, I've lived here. My parents moved here whenever I was just a tot. Okay, so I've, so I've, is... I've lived here since, oh, 1961 or something like that. So you're a Lubbock boy. Yeah, I consider myself, this is my hometown. Awesome. You know? 
Yeah, well, we, everybody. My extended that. family and, and my immediately family uh, uh, all moved back to the uh, Fort Worth area, so I'm the only only member of my family that still lives here. But And your but, family, is, are you from a musical? I know you play with your sister. Mm-hmm. Is, is, your, is your whole family? Has been musical always? Uh, you know, um, my uh, dad had aspirations of becoming a concert baritone uh, and had a beautiful voice and uh, played ukulele. Uh, my mom uh, plays stride piano, you know, and, uh, and, and reads well on a piano and, and, and still plays. Nice. Uh, my uh, big sister is probably the reason that I play guitar. Um, my mom got a green stamp guitar. Oh, green. My sister is a piano player. She, you know, she uh, used to give recitals and play Bach and stuff like that uh, whenever she was a kid and picked up guitar because she was just musical. Well, her guitar was laying around. And so, you know, I, I used to, whenever I was a kid, before I could play an instrument, I walked around the house driving everybody crazy making guitar noises. Really? You know. Uh, it was destined to be. Banging yeah, on the, it yeah. was. On the green stamp So I, they were probably relieved whenever I finally got a guitar and started making noise with that. You know. I think a lot of people are relieved of that. Yeah. Yes. Bless their hearts. <laughs> Bless their little well, hearts. Speaking of, of making noise on a guitar, would you like to open yeah. this show with, with a song for us, man? Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want. Play all a, a, a song I wrote uh, about a, a particular blues style uh, that's called a flat tire shuffle. Uh, it has a groove to it that that does this. It's, it kind of sounds like somebody going down the going down the road on the side of the road. Uh huh. Right. It's got that thing going in it. Right. And uh, so. Uh, I'm I'm sure that uh, I'm about the 900th person to do this, but I wrote a uh, song about a flat tire to a flat tire shuffle. So sweet. <laughs> so it goes like this. The spare wheel is already on the ground. Yes, it's a sad situation when your spare wheel is already on the ground. Yeah, good things are precious, and trouble makes the world go round. Well, a jet black Cadillac red Chevrolet. Yell a continent all in up the same way When you feel that wheel start to shake You're gonna lose and never win You got a nail in the tire Limping down the shoulder on the rim
patch make me want to holler. A two-bit plug kit took my last ten dollars. Gonna need that fixer flat. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, you got a nail in the tire, a limping down the shoulder on the rim. I think everybody in the world can relate to that song, man. Yes. Great I, song. You know you what? Know this, the, I've got the best seat in the house right here. I'm going to tell you what. Oh, I know. Right Boom, next to that old Fender it. amp. <laughs> the, <laughs> it sounds so good. The blues is... is uh, the blues is like life. Whenever you, whenever you write a blues song, you're probably not writing about anything new, you know, because music has been around forever. Humans have been around forever. Do you know? There's not probably one thing that somebody's had to live through that somebody else hadn't had to live through. That's right, yeah. man. You know? And, yeah. and so in the blues, there's, there's themes and... Uh, you just you just kind of pick them out, and 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 say what you're going to say with them, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, it's never going to grow old. It's always going to be our common universal language amongst and, our humans. And 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 while it's true that that technology, you know, is is going to affect how how uh, the subject matter of of uh, songs. Uh, I mean, Robert Johnson was writing songs about cars. In the 20s That's and in right. the 30s, you know. So eventually we're probably not going to have cars, you know. <laughs> probably not. You know, but uh, we still do for the time being, you yeah. know. And, well, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, another piece of technology, trains, yeah. you know. I've, I've got a song on my album called That Was Where It All Went Wrong. Yeah, right here it about, is. About, uh, you know, about... Uh, Basically, um, making some assumptions, it's, 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 it's allegorical, but about making some assumptions and maybe not paying as good attention as you should. That, and, uh, you just described my whole life. <laughs> let, letting, letting things get to a point of, of, uh, to where they're not going to be rectified, you know. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this album a little bit. This just came out last year, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so this is all this. Uh, this is all the blues band stuff. It's right? it's yeah. all uh, it's all my blues band. It's it's uh, Ron Riley on harmonica and uh, Sean Frankhauser on on uh, upright and electric bass, and uh, um, J T. Paws uh, playing drums on it, and uh, it's 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 all all stuff that I wrote. We the, and kind of what got this going was uh, Ron, our harmonica player. Uh, wanted us to uh, uh, get involved in this uh, blues band competition. We'd been doing gigs out at, at uh, um, out at uh, Abuelos and, and uh, here and and doing some doing some uh, uh, playing around uh, uh, this part of the country and stuff. Um, not very many, just just you know uh, a few gigs, uh, but but uh, just just to have a blues band, right? You know. Well, Ron decided that it would be neat if we entered the blues band in a uh, um, in a, a competition called the International Blues Challenge. Well, um, you know, we thought it would be good if we had some songs recorded that if somebody was interested in the band that we could give them a little demo. And so I started writing a few songs. And uh, about... A third of the way into the process of writing and recording songs, I thought, man, this the, the blues is a huge reason for the way that I play guitar. And I owe a debt to the blues. And I need to I need to pay the blues back some kind of way. So uh um I decided to uh make a CD out of it and write a full CD's and like I say, I've written some blues songs before. Uh, uh, on my first album, there's, I think, three blues songs. But I thought, man, I need to do an uh, album dedicated to nothing but the blues. And it's been enough of a, of a, of a, of a sort of a, a powerful motive for me that I'm writing, I'm in the process of writing songs 
for another CD. So I hope to get another project done. Yeah, but that's fantastic. that's all original stuff. And the reason it came back came about was because of being involved in this this uh, international blues challenge. Was that the one in Memphis? Yes. Y'all How went, did y'all yes. end up doing it? Y'all went way far in that. Yeah, we we you know we we uh, uh, made it uh, into the semifinals. Uh, two years running, and uh, boy, the competition in the last one that we went to, and we can't go again because two years is all they'll let you compete. Uh, but uh, the competition in the last one was so good. If uh, and folks, if you ever get a chance to go to uh, Memphis for the Blues Challenge, if you love the blues, you know, and you want to hear. Some people just singing and playing their hearts out. Oh, my God. It's just, it's elevating. It's an amazing thing. Uh, the The first band that, that played at our semifinal venue was some guys from Korea, young guys. Uh, I think every one of them under 30 years old. And they were so awesome. I, you know, they barely speak a li- speak a, a, a lick of English, but they were they sang soulfully. Oh man, I, you you wouldn't believe it. It it was crazy. How long were y'all down there? They How had long- a great harmonica player. Um, you know, and the the band that uh, won won the uh, uh, competition uh, was a band from uh, Houston, Texas, who also competed in in our our uh, semifinal venue, or at least the the venue that was nominally going to be our semifinal venue some crazy stuff happened at the end of yeah, it yeah yeah and and we wound up getting moved to another venue um but uh just oh my gosh it it's it's so inspirational and being part of that competition also was part of my motivation for recording this CD I just I just felt like you know I, I, I owed the blues something. Did it just flow out of you, all of these songs? That, did it take you very I long mean, to write these? It didn't. No, uh-uh. You just, no. And, and I, I think that. whenever I just, sit down and, and, and focus myself on writing the stuff for the uh, uh, next one, I already have two of them uh, done, I think that, that, that it's going to be similar. I, th- I, I think that, that you know, I have no reason to believe that I won't be able to, to you know, Come up with with themes and subject matter, and, and I have no doubt. Kind yeah. of, kind of put a little twist on things, and and come up with, and I mean original uh, original blues is kind of a, a kind of a, a funny thing to say because it's the blues. That's right. It's supposed to sound a certain way, yeah, and yeah. give you a certain feeling and have a certain musical approach, you know, and it's very. It's very, uh, um, it's. I wouldn't say it's rigid in its in its structure, but but there are some definite ingredients. There's, you'd almost say that there was more ingredients that are common to all blues songs than are different. Yeah. Right. So okay. calling all of this original music is maybe a little bit of a stretch, but they're all songs I wrote. You wrote them all. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Do you have one on here that you can do? Uh, now? uh yeah um I brought a uh, I brought a finger slide I'm really not very good with these things <laughs> this is a song I wrote uh, about uh, a uh, guy that walks with a limp and uh, it's the song is supposed to have a little bit of a, a hitch in its giddy up, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Here's the the sort of the musical premise for this is a bass line with a minor note in it against a chord that has a major note in it. So the song's in A, right? And it has a major note in it but it has a minor note in the bass and together they sound wrong right very cool but if you put them together the right way 
they kind of sound cool. I can hear the hitch and the get along, yeah. I can feel it. Hand me down my cherry wood cane. Cause my feet can't take no load. Hand me down that cherry wood cane. And I'll ease on down the road. Ain't no shame. All the same. That cherry wood cane. Talk to cherry wood cane. I've got to rattle round in my bones. Cause I just can't take my rest. To rattle round in my bones. I believe it's for the best. Ain't no shame, all the same. That cherry wood cane. Talk about my cherry wood cane. Can't take my rest I've got to rattle Round in my bones I believe It's for the best Ain't no shame All the same I talk about my cherry wood cane The cherry wood cane Talking about my cherry wood cane Great song. Love it. Love it. Cherry Wood but, Kane right there. <laughs> Love the album cover too with the train train crash, unfortunately. But. So you got you got a bunch going on this summer. Are y'all playing a bunch around this summer, the blues band? Um we y'all have the Buddy Holly uh, Showcase, right? We we are on the Buddy Holly Showcase, and uh, then we've got I believe we have a gig here at the Spoon, and uh, we have a, a couple of things that we're doing uh, out at Abuelos as well. Okay, nice, cool, yeah. 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 So when do you think you'll be ready to go to the studio for album number two? Um, you know, I uh, I I hope soon, but. Uh, one of the thing that's, things that's uh, going on with me, I'm trying to slow down with, with my musical career. I, I probably played 20 years playing seven nights a week uh, with about three nights off a year, paying for my house and, and you know stuff like that. And then for the last uh, 35 or so, uh, I've been playing six, five, six nights a week. And, uh, you know, I've been trying to, trying to slow down and, uh, do some, some of the stuff that I'd, I'd like to do before I die. Sure. You know? Yeah. And it's just not working out. I mean, <laughs> you just love it too much. I, 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 uh, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to turn down some, and I don't know why I wind up doing this stuff. This Saturday, uh, I am uh, playing at the Cactus uh, and uh, playing uh, uh, a bunch of uh, hard rock stuff. Oh, the tribute. I, yeah. Yes. And those shows are fun and challenging, but I'm no good at that stuff. <laughs> I'm just not. And uh, But uh, they keep asking me well, to come do it. Well, you've just done it all, it. it seems. I mean, you know. we can't. 
we can't skip over. You probably talked about this so many times, but you're you're the first person that we've talked to, and probably the maybe the last person that has been on MTV, and not oh yeah, today's crappy tapes. MTV, but the good MTV that you rushed home to watch. And that's r- that's your right. Band when it was when it was that. real music. Yeah. Well, yeah. and and some things came out of that. I was just uh, looking on Facebook uh, not too long ago, and. Uh, a J.D. Souther at uh, Farm Aid came down the feed. And, uh, I, you know, I thought, well, I'm going to listen to that. And uh, they had dubbed in the studio audio onto, uh, the, uh, onto the band. And, and J.D.'s backup band was my band, you know. And, and, uh, but if I remember correctly, that was the first song of our set and there were terrible feedback problems. I mean, just this high frequency squeal came through JD's monitors that that I mean, you watch the video and he barely flinches, but on stage it was like you nobody can hear after oh, that. Bummer. You wow. know. And uh it it he sang beautifully, you know. The band did a good performance, but it was very flawed because of that. And so and 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 the the version that has the audio from the uh, from the uh, from the concert is is on uh, YouTube. You can you can find it. But about if I was reading the dates right, about nine years ago they came in and uh, uh, overdubbed the uh, studio. You know, I'll bet that was. Cool. And it actually works real good because the band was playing very accurate tempo. So yeah. the dubbed in audio just it's perfect. It's pretty seamless. <laughs> I think I remember you saying that that except that, that audio... there's a fade at the end of it. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> you know. Well you played Farm Aid too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah that's that's that, what that, that's the recording we, yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, we I think were, you said so that that band, came in like we, waves. We, were you with we backed Farm up uh I was in a band called the Nelsons with uh uh Dennis Jones, who uh plays bass down in uh Houston now, and uh um Kevin Mackey who's mm-hmm. down in Austin. I think he's retired from drumming. And uh, 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 oh, uh, Don Allison, uh, rest in peace, yeah. who was uh, one of my brothers in the trenches in the music business, you know? That's cool. And, uh, um, and you know, I, I credit my, my sister uh, for getting me started on guitar. I, I have to give a lot of credit to... Uh, uh, my brother Don Allison, for the reason that I wound up doing this for a living, you he know. helped you find the passion in it and the love for it. Well, just just the the the, the perhaps mistaken uh, idea that I could, you <laughs> yeah. know, we were out there doing all this crazy stuff, man. We 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 played with with Jimmy Page in Kansas City. We 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 opened for for for. Uh, Culture Club on their uh, second world tour uh, uh, in uh, Dallas and in San Antonio. I, I, we got to do some crazy stuff, and you do some. And, and the reason that I got to do that stuff was because Don Allison was, in my mind, and in a lot of people's mind, good enough to be a real rock and roll star. I really believed it. And a lot of people did. Is he that good, man? I mean, he, he, I've he, always heard that about he, him. I didn't he know was him, just, but. he was just, he was an instinctive songwriter, wrote beautiful songs. Uh, he, he had supernaturally accurate pitch, you know. Uh, he he uh, was a, a great uh, front guy. He, he was really good, uh, had, a, had a great, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He had a great showmanship uh, uh, in front of a crowd. And, uh, you know, him and the other guys in the band, uh, our, our drummer, our original drummer, uh, Greg Galbraith, uh, that uh, was on the video that, that won the, uh, yeah. uh, won the uh, MTV thing, was a, just a swinging, super talented drummer. And then Kevin Mackey that uh, took over for him, Kevin Mackey, oh, uh, the more that band played, by the time that band played played Farm Aid, Kevin was so good. I mean, 
you could have put that guy, you could have, could have taken, taken uh, uh, um, any professional drummer out of any touring band away from his kit and put Kevin back there and Kevin would have would have sounded as good or better. He was so good by the time we played Farm Aid, and and uh, I mean, just just a killer musician. And uh, Dennis, you know, great bass player, and like I say, he's still playing bass down in Houston. Then we we had some other bass players in that band who were also fantastic: Chris Carson, uh, uh, Billy Alford, uh, and. Uh, um, uh, Sean Frankhauser was the uh, uh, last bass yeah. player for that band, and and Sean. Oh man, he's is, incredible. Oh, yeah. man. I mean, love Sean. so I basically <laughs> I basically rode around on these guys' shoulders, you know, pretending I knew how to play guitar. <laughs> well, you and, figured and, it out at some point. It, 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 you do it for long enough, you, you pretend yeah, pretty you darn get good. Okay at yeah. it. And 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 uh, but but doing that made me think, hey, I can do this. <laughs> You know, and I started uh, after the Nelsons broke up. Well, actually, before the Nelsons broke up, I started playing acoustic gigs for twenty dollars and <laughs> stuff like that. You know, and man, the it, one of the weird things about the Nelsons is we were doing all this great stuff, but we were not making any money. And I was I was sleeping on people's floors. That's such here, a common story here, here in here in Lubbock, yeah. and and you know when I I I ate way better when we were on the road, you know, <laughs> and oh, uh, I I had a ten speed I borrowed ten speed bicycle for my transportation, I had two hundred watt Marshalls, <laughs> you what? Know, How did you do 200 that? Two hundred watt Marshalls, <laughs> and and uh, uh, two uh, uh, beautiful uh, Kramer. Elliot Easton model guitars that I was touring with, uh, but I had no way to move them any place. You know, <laughs> if I wanted somebody. to do a gig in yeah. Lubbock that wasn't the Nelsons, I had to call somebody up and and uh, get them to move my amps. And I was I was again another one of the gigs that I was doing back in the eighties to try and put food in my mouth. I was playing for twenty dollars on Wednesday nights uh, at Johnny Ray's. Uh, uh, jam at Main Street, right? And that's what the band was making. We were making twenty bucks a piece, you know. And and uh, you know, man, it made a difference, you yeah. know. And like I say, I, I was I was I wasn't paying rent. Uh, I, I I finally got to a situation where I could afford fifty dollars to rent somebody's bedroom, and I didn't have to sleep in somebody's kitchen <laughs> on the floor, you know. But Right. You know, th and and and, uh, but I kept kept doing that and kept playing those little gigs, yeah. and and eventually got to where I was working a full schedule, like I say, six nights a week. If you're playing seven nights a week, it almost doesn't matter what you're making. Yeah, you'll make enough to yeah. put a little put a little food in your mouth and so is maybe put some gas in your motorcycle yeah, and stuff right. like that. You told me one time that you had like 13 gigs in one week. Yeah. 13. Yeah. Yeah. So after the Nelsons, is that when you went to Elvis T? Yes. Um, Blues Butchers? I was still playing uh, a, a, a gig just every now and then with the Nelsons. And uh, myself and uh, Sean and Kevin started uh, the uh, uh, Blues Butchers. And we played for a couple of years like that. Uh, and, and, and Don started going over and singing at uh, a place called Belly's. Mm -hmm. uh, and did, uh, yeah. um, he was working with, with uh, those guys over there. And every now and then we'd get together for a Nelson's gig. But, but we were all eager for new challenges and stuff like that. And, uh, and broke. <laughs> you know, so we needed stuff to do. And, and uh, um, so I got this little three-piece band going. And uh, um, I think Kevin is the one that talked Elvis T. Busboy into uh, uh, joining our band. Who was actually talk, a busboy, correct? Talk about, talk about a showman. Yeah. <laughs> he was a dishwasher. But, okay, yeah. yeah, I knew he it was, was some a dishwasher. Yeah. But yeah. they called him the busboy whenever he would come out and sing at Belly's. And that's kind of how he got his handle, 
I love you know, the story. Yeah, there was a there was a a movie called uh, King Creole where uh, Elvis Presley uh, was a busboy. Great movie. Yeah. So that's kind of where Elvis was. Uh, my friend Elvis was washing dishes, but. Uh, Y'all, I could tell you some great Elvis stories. Oh my God! <laughs> I bet you I could. could tell you some good ones. <laughs> let me let me do one real okay, quick. Okay, do that. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a song called "A Tree to Write" by a guy named Roy Head. All right, we were playing uh, at a place in Dallas uh, called Club Dada, and uh, Roy Head and his wife were out in the audience. Well, Elvis, he loves these kinds of things. He loves meeting, you know, especially people who were in the business in the in the 50s and 60s. I mean, he just, he gravitates towards that. And so he immediately went over and, and introduced himself to, to Roy Head and uh, Roy Head's wife. So he, it, it, at one point, Elvis gets a dollar bill out, you know, uh, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Roy Head tells uh, uh, Elvis a story about him getting to meet Elvis Presley. And he said that uh, uh, Elvis Presley hit on his wife. Oh. Right? Right? And Roy Head's wife is there. She's smiling and stuff. And, and, uh, um, and uh, uh, apparently, uh, and, and Roy Head, about this tall, not, not a real tall guy. Elvis was... He's a big guy. He, he's a big guy. Yeah. And, you know, of course, you know, uh, eventually I, I trained in karate and stuff and like that, you know, and that's how he's doing all the kicks and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> they get in a scuffle and uh, Elvis is kicking Roy Head's butt, <laughs> right? Where's this at? So, uh, is this um, at Bally's? Uh, n- no, this, this, this was at Club Dada where okay. he was telling us this story. I don't know where the... The, the thing with Elvis okay. actually happened. Uh, anyway, so so Roy Head's getting his butt kicked, and uh, he sees Elvis's leg, and he bites it. <laughs> and that got Elvis off of him. So Elvis, my friend Elvis, uh, gets a dollar bill and gets Roy Head to sign it, right? And, and, and... Uh, he signed it, and Elvis still has this dollar bill. It says, uh, uh, to Elvis, Roy Head, I met one, and I bit one. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if it left a scar. <laughs> <laughs> you want to play another one, John? I'd love to hear you play another one, man. Let's see. Uh, let me see if I can do... Uh, do that Ray LaMontagne song. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know you can. Yeah. Let me get a harmonica out. I'm a terrible harmonica player. I'm really, really glad that I've got a good one in my band. Oh, yeah. He plays harmonica in this one. I, I better step it up. Yeah, I love Ray LaMontagne. I think he's such a brilliant writer. My and gosh. Well, and his voice. Oh, I know. Yeah, his it's voice just is incredible, man. Stunning, you know? Oh, yeah. I hope we don't get in trouble for... Some sort of copyright infringement. No, we're good. Never put your harmonica in the rack upside down. I've done the research. <laughs> Doesn't sound as good, does it? Yeah, that's a cool rack he was showing us earlier. This magnet's yeah, right on that's there. That's right. This uh, that's way cool. Seidel, uh, uh, Seidel harmonica rack that my friend Ron Riley gave me because he does not use harmonica racks, but he got this one. Uh, from the guy that makes them at a harmonica uh, conference. So my coat when I hit Spokane I bought a hard pack of cigarettes In the early morning rain Lately my hands, they don't feel like mine I stung 
down by the dust and blind. I held you in my arms one time, but I lost you just the same. Jolie, I ain't about to go straight. It's too late. Well, I found myself face down in the ditch. Booze in my hair, blood on my lips. Picture you holding a picture of me in the pocket of my blue jeans. Still don't know what love means. Yeah. Still don't know what love means. Jolie, la 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 la. Jolie. Been so long since I seen your face I felt a part of this human race I've been living out of this here suitcase For way too long Man needs something he can hold on to Nine pound hammer roll a woman like you I'll know one of them things we'll do Yeah Jolie, I ain't about to go straight. It's too late. Well, I found myself face down in a ditch. Booze in my head, blood on my lips. A yeah, picture of you holding a picture of me in the pocket of my blue jeans. Still don't know who, what love means. No, no. I still don't know who, what love means. Mm. Jolie. La, 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 la. Jolie. La 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 Jolie Dang yeah. right. What a yeah. great song. I know that it's, guy a, wrote. The great, it's a heartbreakingly the line beautiful. To me is a picture of you holding a I picture. I know. I couldn't me. even look at him singing. I was going to start crying or something. Yeah. Hey, we ask yeah. all of our guests this. We're about out of time, but what mm -hmm. advice would you give young cats, young musicians trying to get in the business? What, what advice would you give them to help them get a head start, man? Do's or don'ts, whatever you think. First thing I would say is. Um, Realize that if you're in an ensemble, part of your job is to encourage your fellow musicians. Oh, that's great advice, man. Part of your yeah. job is to encourage your fellow musicians, not tear them down. You're, you, you need to uh, make, make them feel like they can contribute something spe spiritual, something special. And encourage them to do it. Um, and music is about magic. It's about creating something that that uh, that transports people. That that that. And everybody on stage has to be in that mode. Everybody has to be able to, you know, feel like feel like they're they're part 
of creating that magic, you know? Um, part of creating that magic, in my opinion, is playing in tune. Take the time. You, A lot of us, myself, get in a hurry whenever we're in front of a live audience. Take the time. Tune your instrument. Uh, tune it accurately. Uh, learn to hear what an in-tune instrument sounds like. Um, uh, be relentlessly positive with your audience. They are there giving you their time. That's right. Giving you their time. They, the, the people have struggles. People, people have, life is hard. And for somebody to take time out of whatever they're going through that's desperately important to them to come maybe be distracted by a little bit of music is a gift that they're giving you and 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 remember that remember yeah. that whenever you're in front of them well and you know, right you know no greater gift right. Is there, when we, like this happened last night, you know, you finish a set and somebody goes, man, I had the most horrible day. Thank you. You that's, made my, yeah. you know, that's yeah. the reward that's for us. That's a two-way yes. street right there that yeah. just yeah. makes everybody Absolutely. feel That's right. That's better. right. And and that, that magic thing, if you can get that out there, it'll start it coming back. back to you. Yeah, that's right, man. And, and, and the whole, there's a synergy that happens there on a good night, you yeah. know? Yeah, I agree. And, right. and, and you never stop trying. And uh, if there's two people sitting at a table in the whole club, those are some of my favorite times. That's right. Man. I love them. I love them. Oh. You know? Man, I know we could probably do four oh, we, episodes. I know. We've only John scratched Sprott. the surface like, I just want to keep going, but unfortunately yeah. we're out of time. But, man, thank you so much for yeah. your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you it. so much, man. Well, thank you for having me. I, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Yeah, tell Real quick, where you play weekly, pretty regular at a couple of different few places. Uh, my two regular gigs that I play, and they're both acoustic single gigs, are on Tuesday nights. Uh, the first one is at Triple J's, and the uh, second one uh, is at Bar PM. Okay. And that's nice. every Tuesday night. And your music's Everything available? else is just harem scarum, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Carjacking, you yeah. know, <laughs> uh, it just just ha it 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 goes by faster than I can keep up with it. That's right. Now your album, you've got it on. If you got it on Spotify, or yes, anything? yes, okay, uh, perfect. It's uh, both of my uh, both of my CDs are, are uh, on Spotify. Okay, awesome. great. Uh, and, so you uh, folks listening and watching, go check out John's music yeah, on Spotify, man. and uh, be looking for this episode on the City of Lubbock's YouTube channel and on their TV channel, My LBK Connect. Yep. And, uh, man, I hope we get to do this with you again. I know. Man. We're going to make another one for, for our second season. Yeah, maybe Because <laughs> we, we have to. The... We haven't scratched anything. Well, we'll yeah. see you at the Blues Showcase. Or the Buddy oh, yeah. Holly at, Showcase. At the BHC. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there next week. Check awesome. Out. So, awesome. John, thank you, John. thank you again. I want to reach out to the Spoon and tell them oh, thank yeah. you for letting us be here today and do this. It's been, a, it's been a great pleasure to be here with John. Come out to the Spoon Jam on Sunday night. Yeah, the guys that, that run it will appreciate it. And they got the best pizza in town. Yeah. Yep. Right on. All right. Well, you guys be on the lookout for another episode for of uh, LBK Rhythm and Roots. Thanks. Thank you.